Welcome back to the Herb Rally Podcast. I'm really excited to have on Maggie Clifford and Rayvon Rollins. Welcome to the show, you two. Yeah. Smoking herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally Podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. Brandon Telg set this up. I want to say he's your manager. So you two are in a band called Habit Forming, which I was really excited to listen to. I listened to a, a, your whole new album that just came out. I want to say February 2024, self-titled. It's got four tracks on it, along with uh, you also included. Uh, Maggie and I were talking about this pre-show. You also included the four instrumentals because it's such a beautifully produced, etheric sound. You all are combining, a, I want to say, folk and hip hop, which I definitely want to get into more a little bit later. But uh, for now, why don't we just start? Let's go into story time. And uh, I w- I'd like to hear how you two met. Maggie, do you want to kick things off with how you two met? Sure, I'll take the first half of the tale. Um, so it's a, it revolves around Brandon Telg, um, the famous inimitable Brandon Telg, who's a big music maker, um, bringer together of people here in Gainesville, Florida. And he organized a live music event um, in Bowdoin Plaza, which is a open air stage here in Gainesville of local musicians, like local folk singer songwriters. And um, I performed that night and so did Purple Cloud, AKA Ray. And um, I performed and, and Ray performed right after me. And I was moved by his entire set. And then um, he played his last song, which is now locally famous by now called Rose Gold, which is a beautiful, beautiful piece he wrote in honor of his mother, which brought me to, to my tears and like t- into the feelings that I un- relatively uncharacteristically, I like I'm, I'm always about giving like um, positive encouragement and like support to fellow musicians and like uh, the positive feedback loop. Um, but in this case, it was more than that when I went to go like congratulate Ray about his set. I had never heard him before. Um, I was just like, I'm going to let's see about collaborating with this person. Um, so if that would be a possibility. Um, so I'll let you take it from here if you'd like, Ray. Yes. Yes. Um, Instagram. Thank God for Instagram. Because <laughs> you DM me like a couple of days like later, and I read this beautiful paragraph of just how <laughs> your your and the art styles could like combine and just make this awesome project. And I was already thinking about man, if I was to do anything on in in Gainesville, I I would like to see where this project goes because to your voice sounds like like. It, it it has a his it has a history, mm. like it it, ha- it has like a journey that it had to go through for it to be so mm, just just perfect pitch, and I and I and I and I can relate because like when it comes to my voice, it's like it has to go through something in order for it to be received. So I thank you for that. Um, yep, yeah, and yep, yeah, from an Instagram DM to coming to my house and making demos, yep, yeah, there we are. Mm-hmm. Have it for me. Forming habits. That's awesome. And I should, say for, I should say for the listener, um, Maggie's actually been on the Herb Rally podcast before. This was nearly uh, over two years ago. Mm-hmm. I, actually, yeah, it was June, June 2022. So welcome back to the show. It's been it's actually fun to get to interview you now. And um, I, I'm curious, how did you all come up with the name habit forming? Ray, why, why don't we start with you on that? Where does habit forming come from? All right. Maggie uh, yelled it after we rehearsed. Oh, I think it was over the phone. Like I was showing her a beat over the phone, and she just basically said, "Yeah, it's like it, it'll be habit forming." You know, and we <laughs> came up with like a lot of list of names every time we, every time we linked up, it was like you know, Black Tie Mafia or uh, <laughs> you know, um, uh, ma- ma- Massive Attack. Like, no, nope, that's already a band. <laughs> Sonic Shaman, something like everything was like not really representing us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she just uh, one day just shouted it. And I was like, that's the one because that's the one that wanted to be heard the most. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And um, I do recall also at that time, again, it was like end of COVID when this, when this collaboration was starting, like as we, there was an open air concert, it was some of the first kind of like kind of more chill live music that had happened. I remember like, going into the green room backstage that night that we met like with my mask on but like do i have to mask inside it was like that time where we were like how are what are our new norms now um and anyway so but i one thing that happened for me over covid was i did develop some habits that i didn't think want to be habit forming but they had become habit forming and so and i but i thought about how like habits that i would like to form and like playing more music again and collaborating more and being um, creative again was a habit that I wanted to be habit forming. And in addition, it's like, yeah, the beats are just so infectious. And I think the songs are infectious and like listening to the song, like I would listen to the song and be like, I can't stop listening to it. Like I love this. And Mm -hmm. I, so it was like, yeah, the multiple meanings. um, Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It, it was it was a beautiful. Sorry, regu- yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I was just saying that was beautiful. That was like awesome. Yeah, that's that's TV worthy. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Y'all are getting um, prepared for when you start going out on tours. You know, talking to all the different local TV stations and whatnot. But um, uh, yeah, I gotta say, I I'm gonna start throwing this album into my rotation. Uh, like I said right before the show, I listened to it two times through you know, back to back. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. This is just so infectious and, um, yeah, it's so well produced. And I love the, um, the combination of the folk and the hip hop. I'm a huge, uh, hip hop fan. So, um, Ray, I really love your raps by the way. Um, but this is the herb rally show. So we're talking about mostly about like healing plants and whatnot. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, why are we having a band on the show, right? So how is it that music itself is healing to the people? Um, Maggie, do you want to go first? Um, music is healing from all directions because it's healing for us as we make it. Um, if we are lucky enough to believe that we can and we are able to. I know that there are a lot of people who don't believe that they can make music in any capacity. Mm. And um, that to me is public enemy number one. I mean, in this, as far as this conversation goes, um, but um, it, it quite literally like can regulate our heart rate, can change our blood composition as we sing, as we perform. I know this because I'm teaching at UF in the music and medicine program there's all sorts of like actual real biophysical benefits to producing music and those same biophysical benefits we can experience um in hearing music too something very important that can happen when we are listening to music is we can experience something um commonly referred to as resonance like where you feel that you are understood whether it be you're understood through a beat or you're understood through a lyric um or through a combination of lyrics and beats um that experience of 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 feeling as though you are um, not alone in your um, complex emotional experience of this life um, is immensely and profoundly healing for us and um, important that we experience. So um, that's what I'll say. What do you have to say, Ray? I wanted to piggyback off that and say um, I feel like music is like a magnifying glass on nature. Mm. If you if uh, like all the sounds are already there, and you really just have to really hone in on what you're hearing through a piano and through a guitar, and just like play out what you feel. And I feel like nature is always feeling, always upbeat always awake sometimes it goes to sleep but it's the it's a living breathing organism Mm -hmm. and music is the magnifying glass of that oh i can't beat this game Feels like I've been let go Kicked off of the team Cause someone tell me what's left to know 
all I've been thrown right off airplanes And when I look down below la 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 Why they all still look the same Oh, I can't keep pretending Your words don't hurt the most Though the memories were thin They're all still filled with the times you show my soul How to flow beyond airplanes Yeah But maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley changes Maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley changes Maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley changes Today Yeah Oh, oh, da 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 Oh, 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 oh I've been swimming on my own On my own Been feeling something Could it be the heart's below? Could it be the heart below? Sometimes the current comes And takes me by surprise Takes me by surprise This one-way heart won't let me sink So, so I ride But maybe one day one-way hearts Will make the valley change Maybe one day one-way hearts Will make the valley change Maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley change today. What's left to know, to know, to know, to know, to know, to know, to know. What's left to know anymore here? Oh, what's left to show, to show, to show, to show, to show, to show, to show. What's left to show anymore here? Oh, what's left to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow. What's left to grow anymore here? Oh, around below, 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 below. Out below, there's no love here. Oh, maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley changes. Maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley changes. Maybe one day one way hearts will make the valley changes today. Oh, oh, those poor hearts below, below, below. Oh, oh, those poor hearts below, below, below. Oh, oh, those poor hearts below. Oh, oh, those poor hearts below. The experience of being in an environment where there are not so many industrial human intrusions in the sonic space, it feels like a cohesive sonic space because the animals that live there and the plants that are making um, audible noises with the wind or through being stepped on or things rustling for for all sorts of reasons, there's, there's a cohesive in general, not in every non-industrial space, but there's a sense of cohesion in the sonic environment. Whereas in the built environments and the industrial environments, there are often very loud sonic intrusions that don't seem to fit together. While they can be like communicating something important, like the beep, beep, beep of backing up of a truck, which is important for the people in the general area, or the jackhammer, da, 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 da. all these noises are a part of the industrial yeah. world. And so it it doesn't feel, we don't have the experience of cohesion in our like everyday sonic experience, which is like a reason why I think a lot of people are using headphones these days. But anyway, yeah. that's to, to draw out that connection too that Ray mm -hmm. is making with like the, like this very real connection between our nature, between the non-human, the more than human world and music it's like, it's more than just what we think of as music. It is like having a cohesive sonic experience of mm. the world. Uh, 
my wife. Yeah, I like that you brought up how some vibes are louder than others. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, um, Amanda, co-owner of Herb Rally, she's a big fan of like, say, Billie Eilish's early stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, I know that. She doesn't make her the beats. I want to say her brother does. He produces them. And from what I've heard, he uses a lot of just like sounds from everyday life and then just kind of loops it and turns it into a beat. And I always found that fascinating. So when mm -hmm. I listen to say Billie Eilish's first album, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I like I kind of recognize that sound and then they just turn it into this beautiful beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the transformation mm -hmm. of the incohesive, incoherent into coherence, into like a perceptible, discernible, like emotional sonic landscape. Yeah, they're yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to also say, um, so I the audience, the rally audience knows that I've talked about this quite a bit. As I was growing up in my early years, I I, I dealt with like say a lot of sadness and depression. And as as I've gotten older, I realize what what brings me more and more joy is getting back to what I enjoyed as a young child, which was drawing and uh I what you all were talking about, um, Maggie, you were saying something about not just listening to music, but actually participating in the creation of music. I remember when I was um, a kid, I had this computer program called Hip Hop EJ, and I was I would spend hours making these rap beats, these hip hop beats, and uh, it was so much fun, such a fun creative outlet. And um, now I'm thinking, shoot, because I don't fancy myself a musician whatsoever, but I, I feel like if I want to continue the healing journey, I should probably get back into not just drawing and, and art, but also creating beats again because it was just so much fun. It could be habit forming for you. <laughs> it could be. I see what you did there. <laughs> hey. No, but for real, I I fully, hey. fully encourage and support that mission. And I think that like getting over that thought that like I'm not a musician or I can't make music. It, I can understand why people might be like, I'm not a musician because you don't feel like you have like the lived experience or whatever, but you can make music, mm -hmm. which to me makes you a musician, but you don't have to call yourself that. Absolutely. Well, why don't we talk? Why don't we talk about both of your work at the uh, arts and medicine program? That's through the University of Florida. I want to say, um, Rayvon, why don't we start with you? Yes. All right. Um, I've been working there since the November of not last year, but the year before last, because of our collaborating with uh, Jordan Burchell and his lovely wife, Sam Moss. Uh, Sam Moss has been an administrator there for a minute, and and Maggie's been working there, and they were like, hey, why don't you audition? And, and I did. I was working at a grocery store at the time and um, needed a better gig, <laughs> just, just, just doing all the music stuff, but just not working a gig that could support me or my father or my family but now it's like i can pay rent no problem the dad like and now i can i got all these like benefits better benefits and everything and i and i think and i thank y'all for that my family thanks you it's a good it's a it's a rewarding gig it's not the easiest sometimes but i i, I got a dope family of musicians that make sure that, that everything's going according to plan which is healing the patients so what are some of the things that you do there at uh uf oh uh, well there's a lot of uh playing for kids playing for adults memorizing uh a bigger repertoire so that you can cater to everybody's musical taste and we basically you know take them give them a chance to get out of the room without leaving the room through the music, through the visual arts, through the, the, the physical mass massages and, 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 and even collaborative li literary works. Like you just artists that want to make patients not feel like they're patients. Sure. They're still people, but when they come in, so yeah, it gives it gives them a sense of pride, especially when they tell us no. <laughs> especially when they're like, there has been people been jamming all kind of tubes and stuff in their face, and the one time they get to say no, some just hit that button right away. But the ones that say yes are the ones that you know they they they're the one that's the most teary eyed because they never thought a hospital could do that, heal them from inside out. Yeah, yeah. So are you um? bringing full-on sets to them are you performing songs that you pre-written are you kind of freestyling it how are you doing that oh 
it's a mixture. It's a mixture because I don't want to be bored. At, I want to do the same song all the time. So sometimes it is on the spot. Sometimes it is a song that I've been working on and need to work out the muscle. <laughs> and then other times it's cover songs and I apply that same um routine for my live shows and it's and it's very in the same healing qualities that it has in the hospital it has in the world because yeah. you know as a songwriter we forget that we were fans before all this absolutely you know and it, it's important to play other people's music i always thought that was a no-no especially in hip-hop when you're reciting somebody else's stuff it's like oh you're biting that's not you but then <laughs> there are rappers that have been doing it for years that can still recite Nas's Illmatic album on front and back <laughs> right <laughs> because not that not because not because it, they're like biting but they're it, they're just so they're just big fans yeah that's a classic are you ever performing yeah, Nas I, at the at the hospital <laughs> no I always make sure that I say we share the same birthday though Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good birthday uh, like, twin. I don't, to know. Have. I don't I, exactly. That's the best birthday twin. <laughs> Virgo. There's Maggie. How you doing? <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> did, did you talk about your work in the schools? Yeah. Uh oh, yes. I've been at East Side and PK Young so far. And doing I've what? been doing literary. <laughs> teaching music teaching like like little cute songs for the kids i gotta play this one for you it's called if i were an instrument if i were an instrument i'd probably make a sound i'd play all through the town and it goes like this i'll probably say bop, 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 and stuff like that <laughs> yes that's <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. that's like our warm that's like our warm up before we get into the, the the other stuff we even did one on the eight planets um the, did a solar system song on piano for the kids and like and then i'm like reminiscing with the teacher like <laughs> I remember there were eight remember there were nine <laughs> <laughs> that, that was cool mm -hmm. <laughs> good old pluto <laughs> good old pluto <laughs> always there always had to be the golf ball of the of the right. solar system project that we made on our hangers uh, yeah <laughs> but yeah <laughs> well you do amazing work ray how about you maggie what, what's your involvement with the uf health uh health arts and medicine so um the arts and medicine program that um rayvon works for is like the same comes from the same seed but is a different arm of this what the arts and medicine project has evolved into over the past 30 years. So the arts and medicine program that Ray works for is um, through the hospital. And then I work for the University of Florida at the Center for Arts and Medicine. And I'm um, currently a visiting faculty here. And this is my, my third year. Um, yeah, teaching primarily three classes, well, at one time with undergrad students in the music and medicine certificate program. So I teach um, one class I love teaching is called Musical Elements of Emotion, which um, is like a general ed class. So that, that isn't for the certificate, but so it's like usually a bunch of freshmen and we spend all semester um, figuring out how to talk about music um, and uh, through a variety of like strategies and um, with a variety of creative languages that the students have to find for themselves. Um, and so, and I also teach a course where students are placed in the hospital. This is for the certificate program. And, um, there are two other kinds of certificates. There's dance and medicine, music and medicine, and visual arts and medicine. And that kind of covers for the most part, the artists that we have in the hospital, except we also have some, um, language arts artists and residents, um, and some yes. like, uh, like, what do you call the massage therapy modality? That modality oh. is also represented by the artist. <laughs> um, and so I have students that have their whole semester, it's like a lab where they are placed in the hospital with an artist or artists in different programs. Um, and then, yeah, we talk about their experiences and um, try to find, yeah, the growth spaces there. So um, that's kind of like a really vague explanation of the kinds of classes that I teach. But in general, the easiest way to understand it is that I'm 
teaching undergrads in the music and medicine program. Awesome. That's in Gainesville. Yes. Yep, right here in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Send us your send us your undergrads. Okay. <laughs> From well, all over the country. <laughs> yeah, Amanda and I are going to be visiting Florida next fall, I want to say. So maybe we'll have to try to swing up to Gainesville and check it all out. Um, you yeah. have to. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yes. I'll, you I'll have to awesome. check out that, that listening room you were talking about in Gainesville, too. I want to check that out. Hartwood. Hartwood. Shout out Hartwood. Hartwood Soundstage. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about the new album. I, I was reading before I jumped on the show an article by Bonnie Matajowski with The Alligator. Um, mm -hmm. and I Congrats. wanted to talk, yeah, that's a great article. I'll link to that in the podcast show notes, but, um, there's a couple different quotes from each of you. I wanted to pull and, and then we could maybe go a little more in depth. Um, Ray, why don't we start with you? So Bonnie says, mm -hmm. Rollins said the duo's blend of songwriting style styles allows them to add their own twist on the hip hop tradition of sampling music. And then you say, we're going to add the hip hop element of sampling, but we're going to sample ourselves because we're musicians and we could actually play those notes. It was an effortless transition. I was just hoping, <laughs> hoping you could expound upon that. I really liked that quote. Yeah. I mean, um, being a big fan of hip hop, there is a lot of like drum machines that allow you to sample notes and re re pattern them how you would like them. And it's like, I always liked the way Biggie did it, though. Biggie mm -hmm. did it in a way that made it make it made sense. It's like, why wouldn't I sample songs that I've already recorded? Like, duh. <laughs> like, it just made so much sense to me as a as a as a high schooler going mm -hmm. into college. The the instruments got more fun and weird and bigger, and some got lighter. Actually, the MPC is not what it used to be. But standalone MPC one, that's how I made the project. And um with using Maggie's piano and vocals though, that was the start of it all. It wasn't like I had a beat already made and cooked up. It was like, no, I had I needed her musicianship to make this process of the album happen. Mm. But I but throughout time I've always been like, man we make enough records we're going to be able to sample ourselves and not have to give nobody a letter saying we use your stuff like that's great that's a good day and perpetuity yeah you can just keep sampling yourself i love that i've I've never heard of it really put that way but so that's piqued my exactly. interest exactly maggie did you have anything to add to that we we wanted to we're building a sonic garden <laughs> i like that <laughs> mm -hmm. um Anything to add to oh uh, the the musicianship involved in the collaboration? Um, yeah, just in general, yeah. Um, I'm not in the context of making the beats. I mean, that was totally right. I mean, I was always like, "Whoa!" It was it was so cool how he I did I sent him yeah the like voice note recordings, and then like days later he would send me back this beat, and I was like wait a second that sounds a lot like the piano that i played <laughs> and that i sent to him or and he did it with vocals too like there was a couple things um it was really 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 cool um and illuminating for me to see the rhythmic choices that ray would make that i didn't make like in my um in a couple of melodies actually um, and in like in the ways that the like the piano part that I initially sent or the like a, a voice and ooh, ooh thing that I sent um, and then seeing how like he heard it or how he like, yeah, how like his his rhythmic intelligence um, was was just it became really clear to me when I could see the difference between like the rhythm that I came through. I always preferred the rhythm that he like came up with, you know, and that, and that he found like a lot. And I would, and it, I'm still sort of uncovering what the differences are. There's some things about syncopation, like that, where you put the downbeat on, but it was like, it's more than that. It's like, yeah, it's like a, a rhythmic sensibility that I'm learning from. And I learned a lot from too, um, in trying to learn somewhat failing, but somewhat succeeding in trying to learn um, his spoken word poetry for the um, songs as well. And like, and feeling how and where and like, 
how the rhythm changes and and how the flow is created for the words that are coming through but it's just like it's so delicate and so precise and it's like and sometimes it's so um it's so fast it's not like the fastest rapping that you've ever heard but it's definitely the fastest rapping that i've ever tried to learn yeah. and so it's like um i've i've that's what i would like to say is that i've just learned a lot through from ray's like a um, musical and especially like uh, like rhythmic sensibilities So, Maggie, your quote uh, from the article, <laughs> which I really loved, was uh, I call hip hop folk music because it's the music of the people. You want to expound upon that? <laughs> well, OK, let's go back to what you said a little while ago, Mason, yeah. that when you were a child, you were able to play with these tools that to make what you called rap or hip hop beats. Yeah. And and that is making music that is legitimate that is powerful, that's important. You felt you could sense even as a child that it was like healthy for you. As you look back on your childhood, you're like, whoa, that was such an important creative outlet for me. And the whole roots of hip hop is using what you have to make a beat so you can start layering it, so you can start to write something, so you can express yourself, so you can be creative. And so it's like for people who may be in school systems where music has been pulled from the schools and they're not learning how to play the violin, they're not learning how to play the piano, they take what they have, they get creative and they make art with it. So it's like that to me, that's what folk, folk music is music from people who usually are not classically trained. They're using what they have around them. That's why we get the instruments like the banjo or the steel drum um, or the drums that are out of those plastic five gallon drums that uh, like the container things that sound amazing when you turn them upside down and then you bang on them. Like <laughs> that's what I'm saying about like this, the, the accessibility of music and like how there's some gatekeeping around this idea of like you are a musician or you aren't, you can sing or you can't. It's like anywhere there are people there comes music because music is natural to us. Music is original to us. Music is the original language. So um, that's why. And so hip hop, almost no other genre right now, like hip hop is the most recent version or like the most recent popular version of this like original folk music because it's like, it is the accessible, it's the music that became accessible to people who needed expression and also were excluded from access to the so-called high arts and I emphasis on so-called high mm. arts. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I agree. was feeling that for a second. Yeah, what do you have to say, Ray? <laughs> girl, I was like, girl, you about to make me run in here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why I play guitar and the MPC because those worlds are not different from each other. It's it's there is no there is no oh either you're born with it or not. Like no, every, anywhere there's sound and people, there's music and there's the folks, the folks, the folk arts, the folk, mm -hmm. the folk people, the folk magic, whatever you want to call it. As long as there's folks, there's people. So it is music of the people. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hear more about the album. What are some of the themes? Uh, tell us about some of the different songs and everything. Maggie, why don't we start with you? Okay, yeah, it's it's fine to start with me because it did. We started the exchange of music when I sent him a couple of song clips. I was like, oh, I have these two songs. that I think they're not done, but they're like these. I have like hooks. And so like, what do you think? And that's when he like when Ray came back and, and I was like, what? Wait, what? Um, so. I uh, the song rocks <laughs> and ghosts and ghosts fall into that category um, mm. where I had just had this. Maybe it's better leave it for a while. Nothing is forever. And that's like an example of um, and I liked the rhythmic flow of it and the melody and all that stuff. And then that was um, I think that was all I had. I don't think I had a second verse yet. Maybe I do. I don't know. But um, that the themes are kind of like the wonkiness of coming out of the pandemic. Like there's like for me, especially in rocks and ghost, um, they're kind of inspired by conversations I was having with friends, things I was experiencing myself around this, like the intensity we were feeling around relating to other people, like where it was like everything seemed to be on the line. Like online dating is still a thing for so many people. And it's such like a, a murky 
way to mm-hmm. initiate like re- relating to others and it can be it can like yield positive outcomes but for a lot of people i know it yielded highly questionable outcomes um and for a lot in a lot of different ways and so um both rocks and ghosts are sort of around those themes of like trying to figure out how to like re-enter this um the the inescapable social dynamics of being human today and so um and especially coming out of the forced isolation of the pandemic and um and then also grappling with are also like forced and imposed isolation of like living living in online worlds you know so um there yeah the intensity of like figuring out how to relate intimately with others like whether it be on a friend level or like as an another kind of intimate other um that those songs it was how do we come to being fine again or being you know okay as we are in community now that that's what those songs were about for me and then ray just yeah. made them blossom <laughs> 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 yes, that that was a beautiful that was a beautiful transition from not having lyrics for a song to having lyrics after I've heard like her sing and, and put the piano behind it. It was like, okay, this can be something like really fun to make a part of. To, it's like, you know, when Spider-Man meets the symbiote. I was the symbiote. <laughs> I took I took That's everything hilarious. that she did and just made it like punch through a whole wall. It was like, and then Jordan was like the bat, the jetpack on the symbiote on Spider Man. Like that was just we just took that thing to a whole other place. I'm gonna pretend like I understand. And, um, with the yeah, two- exactly. <laughs> Oh, sorry, comic book knowledge. I'm sorry. I was going to say, we're approaching up. nerd territory here. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, so you're good. So for, for Hearts Below, I I had I had that song for a while, and I always wanted to do like a, a, a folky duet with it. But mm-hmm. I like the way we did the dancing, more dancing version, because it can come off as a sad song, but it's like... If you meet if you meet another uh, energy that knows what it feels like to be alone, and then you find comfort in each other, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be so bad. But do you feel sorry for other people who can't experience that same um, camaraderie? Camaraderie, and um, with uh, with what gives is just basically a middle finger to the doubters. Mm. Not a middle finger. It's like a middle finger peace sign. Like, <laughs> read between the lines. That's read hilarious. The lines. Like, I like that. <laughs> like, you don't... You know. <laughs> it's like, people don't think you can do things just because they didn't have the courage to do it. And it's like, I'm, we're, we're over that. We're over that. It's the way of thinking, we're over that. Like, not saying that we're... We're better than them, but it's like it's just gonna take some time. We just gotta be aggressively patient with doubters this year and the next. I love that so much. Yeah, I try to live my life like that as well. Um I loved every song on the album for individual reasons. I have to say, do you two want to hear my my two favorite songs? Are you curious? Or <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. I really love I am. What's that? Ray? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I love a uh, um Yeah, do it. Do it, For whatever though. reason, I was uh, really grooving with uh, Rocks and Ghost. Do you think that's going to be kind of the common, like, the hits or anything like that? Or the, the, Those are the singles. So, yeah. yeah, I, exactly. I, yeah we, get, we, get, we get why, yeah. Maybe I'm basic. I don't know. But, um... the, 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 I mean, <laughs> if, 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 you had to, if you had to introduce it, if you had to introduce what we do, I'm glad it's those two songs. And yes, that's it. That's the move. There was something about the production too. <laughs> and I, I do want to um, shout out the the producer, one of the producers. You, uh, I want to say it was Jordan, right? But um, Jordan Purcell. Mm-hmm. Before we get into that, one of the uh, lyrics in Rocks uh, was, uh, when thoughts are rocks, they're better left unsaid. Um, mm-hmm. Maggie, was that your line? And if so, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear you like tell us what that means. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that comes from 
<clears throat> I've been a family woman now for my son's going to turn 13 in July. And so, um, and we've been a family of four for 10 years. My daughter turned 10 in mm-hmm. January. And so something that a, a piece of wisdom that has at least come true for me is that when I feel that a thought has this like sinking feeling, when a thought is a rock that might, that feels like it's dragging me down as well. I used to think that that meant that I should express it to make it go away or something like that to, to like let it free. But for me personally, what has, what has come true for me is like, sort of maybe letting it settle a bit and like maybe it does like it finds a resting place Mm -hmm. and then once it's like resting somewhere this rock then it either just like finds peace where it is because it was just a passing thought or it piles up when thoughts are rocks uh whatever there's a there's a line about piles there too that's right like if it if it starts to build up then it's like um then it is something that needs to be dealt with somehow, or it just continues to become a rock pile, a sculpture that <laughs> maybe has form, maybe doesn't, but um, that it is like, it's not necessary to say the thing when it's feeling like a sinking feeling. I've had a lot of experience over the mm. past, you know, dozen years where a, th- a thought, a thing has a sinking feeling and then, and I let it settle. And then sometimes months or years later, it is it comes out in a way that is joyous and joyful. Like, and I'm not trying to be prescriptive here for anyone because there's a ton of situations where I'm sure that saying the hard thing is the thing that needs to happen. But I'm just saying in the context of my the peculiarities of my own life, this it has felt true for me very often that when a thought has a sinking like feeling that doesn't feel good that it doesn't mean that the thought is any more true than other thoughts. It just means that it's attached to something in that moment that like may or may not turn out to be true in the long term. So it's like, I, I have made the decision to like, when thoughts are rocks, I just, I let that be for a while. It's kind of the, if you don't, it's not exactly, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, but it's like, it's a similar kind of um, like, vibrational piece of advice i guess because yeah. the, the risk of causing harm to others by saying something when when the emotional context of the of the words themselves are have those so-called negative connotations like the risk of causing undue harm i think is pretty high and in, in those moments so like um that's that's the other part of that is that like trying to cause the least amount of harm um, mm. with my words and with my music is um, there's a yeah. piece of that too is like let it settle and then see that turned into quite a lecture mm. <laughs> just seeing if a Ray, Ray <laughs> no, anything like... to add on to that yeah uh, yeah um, my part after after when thoughts are rocks, they're better left unsaid. Mm-hmm. I'm singing from the perspective of the thought. Mm-hmm. So like, Throw me show me you where you went. Throw, throw me where you went. So all my wounds can heal. No, it's like the thoughts are like a part of us. So yeah, it's still us, but it's just a sadder version or a happier version. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it can't come back joyous. Like sometimes you throw a rock just to skip it across the water. Sometimes you throw a rock just to get it out of, just get it out. Mm-hmm. And then, then there are times you can just let them settle at the bottom until they're a beautiful mm-hmm. statue. Mm-hmm. I like the way you said that, Maggie. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 metaphorical work that Ray's like um uh I always call it spoken word poetry um explores the metaphor of rocks in the context is was the thing that I was like when I first heard it I was like <laughs> did you just do what I think you just did <laughs> and then he some, he somehow goes on this whole journey this whole journey all these different metaphorical ways of interpreting <laughs> rocks in this context. And then, and then he concludes it in this like perfect package of like pressure does in fact make diamonds. That's the reason we're here. So it's like, and, 
it it was it's i mean <laughs> the only way to describe it is masterful yeah the th the hard thing to say is probably to the person that's a diamond this whole time and they don't know it <laughs> like we're all diamonds sometimes we all have to say the hard things to each other so that we can shine you know what i mean yeah can be mm -hmm. i would like to give uh jordan his flowers you want to talk about who produced this album uh rayvon you want to shout out shout out the producer yes jordan brushell is like a, an amazing musician based in gainesville florida um, him and his lovely wife have been doing music for years and like, it's always a pleasure to go to the studio and just nerd out. We've nerded out a lot over like <laughs> technology and AI and just, just rap rappers, like, Spider -Man. Maggie, like Spider-Man, just, just, just being just being kids that's and that's the best part about doing a new project is like you just need to be a kid again until you have to do the adulting stuff but <laughs> it's so fun it was a fun time i had a great time at with jordan on this project and he was like nice enough to allow me to carry the title of producer too like i had a certain sound that i wanted to apply to the project he wasn't very he wasn't he wasn't greedy with the the board or, or instruments even he was just like yeah man whatever but whatever it's like whatever whatever it need, whatever it needs just let me know i was like thank you like that's, that's really dope like that you can have that kind of conversation with a producer and him not be like don't touch my things like mm -hmm. that's really nice very yeah, nice but... producer etiquette no it's it's sharing it's, is it's, caring it's <laughs> It's rare, and that was one reason when we were thinking about who to work with on um, recording and producing this album, Jordan Burchell's name came up with Brandon, and that was uh, immediately my first choice because I, I knew him a little bit. I had never worked with him in this context before, but I had an inkling that that's the kind of producer that he would be, and like knowing like how deft Ray is with like the sound and the mix and the rhythms and and all and the texture of of the of the work. Um, uh, I was like, this is going to need to be a collaboration and not like somebody who thinks they know more about sound engineering than, or they know more mm -hmm. about like what, like what this other like line should be here. And, um, and even, but he also mm -hmm. brings his musical genius. So like his input was always awesome. And he was also so mm -hmm. able to um, be open, collaborate, invite, encourage and um, did not have what um, this kind of like my way or the highway thing, which um, even if it's not an overt position somebody takes in a studio, yes. it is a common one. And sometimes it's a little bit um, understated in a way that still directs the project in a way that maybe the artist is not super um, excited about. So anyway, it was a beautiful collaboration, and what race? <laughs> they just yeah, it it was it was perfect, and he's an amazing musician himself with music available. So go stream that as well, Jordan Burchell, because he's got some amazing tracks up there yeah. too. And also, don't forget, Purple Cloud is is his own artist. That's right. We will link to Purple Cloud, Maggie Clifford, all the above, Jordan Burchell. So. Great. Yeah, I, I like the word you use, texture. There really is a textured sound to each one of them. They're all unique beats in their own right. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to listen and uh, to have it forming one more time. Um, but um, let's let's talk a little bit about plants. Um, since it's a plant show, Rayvon, do you have any sort of a plant allies? Anything come to mind when I say that? Any, any particular plants you're fond of for uh, a reason? I, 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 I Google my name a lot and the flower <laughs> I do my I Google my name a lot for for career and business purposes, of course, not because I'm that, that cynical, but um I really like uh the purple mallow pops up mm. next to my name a lot. Like nice. I think I think they also call them the purple cloud too. Oh, so that's cool. like when I'm typing in the purple K L O U D uh 
the purple mallow flower pops up and then they're really they're really cool i'm starting to really like that plant i might uh, add it to my repertoire uh, to branding and stuff you should i love that it is because i'm because uh, i'm mellow and, yeah and I'm, like, I'm so i'm so mellow i'm a purple mellow like i can make <laughs> that a line there's, there's some stuff i could do with that mm-hmm. how about you maggie yeah, um, the magnolia trees have always been my favorite. And there was one growing outside of my house where I grew up in upstate New York. And it's just like it its blossoms were always so magnificent. And I was always so like shocked and surprised when it would blossom again. And after like the, you know, the quiet, cold, barren winter um, it, and you see the green leaves again. And I seem to recall like several winters, like sometimes robins will still be hanging out in the winter and like that there would be like a robin, like resting on the magnolia when I would walk home from school. Like even if I was still crunching in snow, maybe it would be like a late snow or whatever. Um, the magnolias. And then when I came here to the mm-hmm. university of Florida, there's like, there's a different, um, variation, but like very clear magnolias, mm-hmm. like that line, the streets, and these mm-hmm. ones, it's crazy because, like, I've always felt so, uh, like, attached to magnolia. And then, like, when I first encountered these trees, I was, like, I felt so attracted to them. But they looked so different than the magnolia that was in my yard that, like, I couldn't believe almost that it was a magnolia. But I also knew that it was. And then, um, like, but these ones, like, the mm-hmm. buds are, like, so huge. And then all of a sudden, they're just, like... And they're the petals are that so, that's so soft and so thick, so so luscious. Um, and I got a shout out to the jasmine. Like the scent of the jasmine can just make every worry disappear. <laughs> and just like the jasmine makes it seem as though like it that everything is just perfect like, <laughs> so uh, that's my favorite seed too mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. awesome well this has been a lot of fun uh getting to know you too i'll definitely have to visit y'all when i'm out in gainesville at some point but um any kind of closing thoughts or places you want to send folks as uh, the best place to hear the album on spotify ray Water your plants as well as yourselves. Habit forming is out now on Spotify as well as YouTube. Everywhere, everywhere songs are streamed. Um, and yeah, thank you, Mason, for having us and for um, taking a listen and being so careful and caring for the plant people and things. My pleasure. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, absolutely, y'all. Well, um, We'll chit chat soon. And uh, thanks again for taking the time. Thanks to y'all for listening. Big shout out and thanks to Amanda for editing. And we'll see you in the next episode of the Herb Rally podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, y'all. Are you a ghost now? Though we just met, how does someone you hardly know become the only road to go down?